Hey everybody, this is Prowl and welcome to episode 2 of the Bedrock Guide series. And we start out the day by our friend, the pink sheep. Um, I looked this up by, by me. I do not mean that Blue Jay looked it up for me. Um, pink sheep actually have a like 0.1% chance of spawning. So this guy is literally one in a thousand for sheep. Super special that we got him. Th does he do anything special? He makes me happy. That's what he does. That, and that's very, that's very important. That's very important. But besides the pink sheep, we have a lot of big plans for today's episode that we need to get accomplished. Let's start talking about what those are going to be. So today's episode is really going to be all about farming. Uh, we need to get ourselves set up for food. That way we can go and do all the things that we want to do. And this, this little bit, that's not going to cut it. Although we, we do need this. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, now, there's a little shortcut button that you can use, and it's it's different per different devices. I think for a lot of the consoles, it's like it might not even be bound by default. I always would set it to the, the control stick click, but it's called pick block. Do yourself a favor, set up pick block, because when you have pick block, you can just simply use that button, and it'll pull up the related block. So I can put that down. If I want to go to my dirt, I go to my dirt by using pick block. Now, what are we doing today? We're getting these farms all set up because we need a sustainable source of food that we can continually have going for us. That way, when we go down into caves, when we fight monsters, when we go exploring, we can keep ourselves fed and we don't have to worry about potentially starving to death. And we don't have iron yet, so we don't have buckets of water to use. Although, ooh, there's some iron down there. We're going to get that in a little bit. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this area around us. Pro tip number one, guys, pro tip number one for this episode, use what you got. We have a little lake right here. We have another little lake right here. We're going to dig it out and we're going to use this and we're going to use this to plant all of the things that we need to plant so we can really get a good food source going. So I'm going to continue digging this out now and getting into the land all prepared and then we'll take a look and see what it is that we got to do from there. With a decent area cleared out, we can start to get things together, okay? So we can go through and harvest all of our wheat that's grown here. The big thing when it comes to crops, guys, early games, you want to make sure you keep an eye on it because as it finishes growing, you need to be replanting right away. That way, you're not wasting any time. And what we're going to do is we're just actually going to use this land right here, and we're going to go across just like this and actually connect. Oops. We don't need to do those ones. Connect these sides together because all of this will stay hydrated. And I think this right here for now is going to give us enough place to grow wheat. We're going to have to continue to pick it, get the seeds and plant it down. And then also I would like to find, I wonder if we could find some over here. Yep. Some sugar cane. Sugar cane is an excellent resource to have and to start planting early because in the bedrock edition of the game, it grows probably like three or four times slower than it does in the Java edition of the game. You're going to have to wait a while for it to grow up. So it's good to get some, plant it early and keep it growing because we're going to need this to make paper and make other things later on. And then to plant it, it will go by any block on any uh, dirt sand block i think gravel as well at least dirt and sand i know and it will plant right beside water you cannot plant it diagonal to water you cannot plant it above water it has to be touching water is how you plant it down i'm actually going to search the shoreline here and see if i can find a little bit more of this because i'd like to get more of it going than than just that and another tip while you're running around looking for sugar cane or anything else this early in the game punch all the grass that you see we're getting a lot of seeds from this right now which is perfect um, and we're going to need it because this is going to get our food supply going a lot sooner um, so just make sure you punch all the grass that you see and i see some sugar cane way down there we're not going to travel too far for it but at the very least we'll grab what's over there oh here's a bunch of it right here yeah i think this right here will do the trick i don't believe we've really need to go anywhere else that'll do the trick we'll grab a little bit more uh seeds right here to get our wheat farm going and we're going to be in good shape to start getting this place in order another pro tip early in the game is you need to diversify if you get yourself a lot of different ways to get food you will end up with a lot of food chickens right here they will follow you if you hold seeds out holding seeds is going to work because that's what they eat you feed them seeds and if you have two chickens around that will make them breed also the fact that he's following it makes him persistent remember we talked about persistency earlier in here in the um in the series in episode one and persistency means this guy is not going to disappear if we go away from him 
Now it's about to turn nighttime, so we actually may stay over here. You don't want to get too far away when you're when you're like trying to lead them. Cause you see, if I get far enough away, he's gonna lose interest and stop following, um, and he'll fall behind. So we want to make sure we keep him close. But first, before we do anything, we need to go to sleep. And we did have some mobs spawn while we were sleeping. Uh, we got a spider right here. Uh, spiders, they are not aggressive to you during the daytime unless you hit them. But at nighttime, they're going to come after you. So you need to watch out. You need to watch out. Uh, for now, we actually need to save. Is he coming after me right now? Okay. Woo. I was a little worried. I was a little worried. Um, for now, we need a home for this chicken. So let's actually, let's put our seeds away for just a second. We have a couple more fence here. And we don't have enough. So we're going to go and craft up just a little bit more and let's craft up some sticks and let's make a few more fences just like this and oops where did our there's our chicken there's our chicken and let's get our chicken in here here chicky chicky pull out your food just like this and once he sees it all you gotta do is walk around he will follow me over here ow he will follow us in and then we're going to close him off once we get him in there. And I'm going to show you guys a neat trick to be able to get in and out of here yourself without letting these guys loose. But before we do that, if you guys are enjoying the series so far and would like to continue to see more of it, I need your support. It helps immensely if you click that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and drop me a comment down below, either related to the video or just related to the series itself. I would appreciate it very much. We got a little bit of a problem. We don't have room in our inventory for anything anymore. We're going to make some more oak logs or oak uh, planks. And then we're going to go over to our crafting menu here and we're going to make our first chest of the world. Now this chest right here is going to allow us to store all the items that we need to store. So we'll place that guy down right there just like that. And anything we don't need to carry on us at the moment, we'll go ahead and place it all down. Like the raw meat's not doing us any good. Um, the... Uh, fence right here we don't need anymore raw meat leather gunpowder i think there's some flowers on us um and we can go through and now we want to place down our fences so we can actually get in and out of here um he, this guy may try to get out unless we can go quick there we go and then i thought i had make one more fence there we go make one more fence like this Oh, no, 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 no. Stay in. Stay in. Woo. And then here's the trick to get in and out. We're going to go back to our crafting table and we have wool. So you're going to have to have extra wool. You're going to want to make some carpets. And if you put the carpet on top of a fence like this, normally you can't jump over top of this. The carpet is a little trick that allows you to get on top because you can get on the edge of that before it goes over the edge of the fence. And that will make your life extremely easy. Um, for getting in and picking up eggs from this guy, wool from this guy, etc., etc. Um, we need to go through and we need to finish planting everything. Where's the sun? We still got plenty of sunlight. So we're going to plant this down. Ah, that'll be a good start. And it also, we need to kill this spider right here. Because if it turns nighttime, he, he will definitely try to eat our faces. And spiders are great to kill because you get string from them. And string is a good thing to have. And there we go. Why is string good to have? Because you can make cool things from it like bows, dispensers, um, and you can even craft it into wool. And it's used in a few other recipes as well. So once you reach a point like this where you're just kind of waiting on things to happen, we're waiting on this to grow, we're waiting on that to grow, and we got some guys in here we can't really do a whole lot with yet. Um, it's a good idea at this point. We're not going to go caving, but search the surface level of any like caves. Oh gosh, there's a skeleton down there. Skeletons, a little dangerous this early because he's got a ranged attack. As you can see, he could ow, he could shoot us. Um, so we're gonna have to we're gonna get the drop on him. We're gonna get the drop on him. He doesn't want to come out of there because he doesn't want to get hit by or killed by the sunlight. The sunlight will kill the skeletons. Um, but skeletons drop bones, which can be turned into bone meal. You saw earlier and they drop arrows and they drop bows so let's get the drop on this guy there we go and we took no damage from him oh there we go guys and we found our first bit of iron to actually mine up i know we saw some earlier but this is not down in the water it's going to be a whole lot easier to get and we're going to mine up some of this coal too there's a wandering trader down here what where's where is that lead going aha uh -huh. now wandering traders are sometimes good for some things if you have emeralds we don't have any like we would be able to get cocoa beans which we don't have now or dark oak saplings which i really like to have 
but we don't have emeralds to trade with him. So what is this guy good for now? He's good for the leads that he has. So we're going to kill him. And we're going to pick up and take his leads. I hear zombies down here, which is not good. Oh, gosh. These guys are hurting us. They are not happy with what we've done at all. We're just, we're just going to kill them. We're going to get them out of here. I'm sorry that I did this to your master, but you got to go. Oh, look. Some more iron. Oh, gosh. Uh, look, look, look. I don't, he can't get up to us. We're not going to go down to them. But we're going to get this iron right here and hopefully be safe. I don't have any torches um, to block more mobs from spawning, which reminds me, we need to talk about mob spawning. But let's just grab, let's just grab what we have right here for now. This is going to be a great start for us without actually having to go caving yet. Wow, this is, this is a lot. This is great, guys. You want to talk about luck. This is luck right here. Oh, gosh, is he, he get up to me? No, he cannot. Um, we can hit him and he can't hit us right now. Let's take advantage of that. Now, one big difference in the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft and the Java Edition is the combat systems are completely different. So if you play Java, you're not used to being able to spam click or click really fast to attack. Um, in Bedrock Edition, we can do that. So if you're playing on Bedrock, you probably just want to swing that weapon as fast as you can to kill whatever kind of mobs are around you. It'll actually knock them back a little bit as well. That way they can't hurt you. Let's collect the rest of these resources and go up top and let's show you guys what we can do with it. So we picked up a few things. We're going to go to our furnace here and we're, our inventory space is kind of full again. So we're just going to dump off our starter wooden axe here and our starter wooden pickaxe. We're going to actually save those. I would like to like put those up somewhere special because that was our first two tools of the world so we're going to keep those in there and if you guys have any ideas of maybe what we can name them um, that would signify that they were like for our early game definitely let me know uh, we're going to take this out we're going to get our wood back and coal is a much better fuel source than wood it can cook or smelt a lot more items now i say smelt because smelting is what you do to ores we have 17 iron ore did i hear something we have 17 iron ore right here. We want to smelt that down because we can turn that into iron ingots and use it. And actually, just to make things happen a little bit quicker, we're going to make a second furnace because we have the cobblestone for it. Place that down right here. Put the rest of our coal in there. And we're going to cook down some more uh, meat. We got cooked mutton there. Actually, I don't have any other meat to cook. So we're going to take half of this out. Put it in here that way we can smelt it down a lot quicker and i'm gonna go harvest some things and go to bed and then once i have the iron we got some fun things we're gonna be able to do with that that we kind of need to do another nice thing is every time you take something out of a furnace you get experience points you see that bar down there it has a seven above it and the green bar is all the way full indicating i'm about to level up those levels are gonna be important later because you use those to enchant things and you can use them to name items on like anvils and things like that so we definitely want to get lots and lots of levels Eight's not really a whole, did he steal a block? We're gonna leave him alone. This is an Enderman. Enderman, they have some good things for sure. You get Ender Pearls from them. They give lots of experience, but he will totally kill us in one or two hits right now. We are not gonna come anywhere close to trying to fight him. They are non-aggressive until you take a swing at him or until you look at him. And uh, we, we're not, we don't wanna do any one of those things right now. So we're gonna leave him alone. Um, and now with our iron, he's making me really nervous. Uh, with our iron, we want to make our first iron tools of the world. Remember, iron tools are your next tier up. We're going to make some sticks here. Probably more than I need. And we're going to make the most important tool that you're going to have early game, the iron pickaxe. We're going to make one of those. We're actually also going to go ahead and make an iron axe, an iron shovel. And we have a little bit left over to where we're not going to make an iron hoe. We're going to make a sword. And then we're going to go ahead and make a chest plate. Now, this iron chest plate is going to help defend you. You see, now I got some armor bars down there. There's three bars full. It's not a lot of armor, but it's going to help us not get uh, hurt as bad if a monster hits us and dies easy. And also, now that we have a sword, we can much more efficiently kill monsters that are around us. So we're going to keep that on our first hot bar slot. That way, it's always there, ready to go to help defend us in case something attacks us. Now, I see another chicken here. We're going to use the seed method to lure him over here, put him in the pen. And we actually need to start prettying this area up. So I'm going to do a little bit of what's called terraforming right now. Really probably a more simpler version of that, which is just clearing out the land and just kind of flattening things out a little bit because we need to make this area look good. We need to protect it and we need to we need to have this make a little bit more sense. Our chicken laid an egg and that egg allows us to make more chickens. Um, there's, I think, a one in eight chance of throwing an egg of it making a chicken. And we didn't get one that time. That's a little disappointing. 
Now, the next thing I'd really like to do is actually block ourselves from having mobs being able to attack us. Uh, we got two eggs here. Let's go ahead and throw those in here. Nope, no more chickens. And we I picked up some coal from just that little like dip in the ground right there, that little cave-like area, but it's only 12, and that's not a lot to make ourselves a lot of torches. But what we can do is we can actually take this coal and two of these pieces of coal will burn all of this birch into charcoal and then we will then have two pieces of coal made as 12 pieces of charcoal which could be used just the same to make torches so like that we just grab it uh, you can go to your crafting bench or this one you don't need your crafting bench for and you got torches right here and torches are going to help you light up your area that way you don't have any mobs spawn now this little area that we have set up here for ourselves just so you guys know this is not our permanent base this is a temporary base that we're messing with right now just to get ourselves established and ready to move on to a more permanent location look i left some coal down here um we want to be able to move on to a more permanent location and not too long but while we're here we want this place to look really nice so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to work up a little bit of structure to go around this and a way to light it up and make it look good uh, we're also going to make a nice area for our, our animals to be housed and we need to find a good area for ourselves to be as well i don't quite know if i want to use this hillside right here and carve this out or maybe if we use this little area right here um, but I think we're going to make this like a little farm area. We'll build like a, a actual house here in the next couple of episodes. But for now, we need a safer place and a better looking place to camp than just this. Now we have gone and we have cooked down our or smelted down our cobblestone into stone. You can do that by going into a furnace and popping the cobblestone in there and you'll get stone out in return, which is great because we're going to use that for a little build over here. I've decided we're actually going to use this area right here for like a little farmhouse type thing that I would like to do. Uh, we're actually going to here. Let's knock. Let's knock this one more row out and we're going to purpose this area and make it look good. Now, what I think at first I would like to do is actually kind of like form this hill out a little bit more uh, just to make it look a little bit more natural. I know it's naturally generated like this, but it doesn't look very good. So what we're going to do is just kind of build out a little bit of it like this just to give it a little bit more of like a shape and like maybe this. And it looks a little bit more purposeful like this. Like that's starting to look a lot better, I think. We'll throw that there. And yeah, it's got a lot better curve to it now. I carved out the back here. And I think what we want to do is we want to place some stone um, just to kind of cover this up. Make it look kind of rocky like it was before. So we'll throw that down there. Uh, we shall throw maybe some of this down here. And we're going to need some more stone for sure, but this will close off the back of it. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. And to make sure no monsters will spawn in here, we're going to throw down a couple torches that we'll kind of clean up later. And I'm thinking what we're going to do is we're going to probably do a wood floor and we'll throw down some like support beams in here. So like, let's throw down this oak right here. That makes it look like this is being supported and held up because otherwise this place would look like it's gonna cave in on itself. So we'll put that guy there. We'll put this guy right here and fix this one up top. And then we're going to turn some of this oak into planks. That way we can have like a good looking floor that goes with this. We'll throw in a couple more support beams just to make sure this place looks like it's being held together. Maybe throw in one in the back right here. And then let's throw in another one in the side, like right here like this. No, I don't like that one at all. I don't like that one at all. Be willing to change. If you don't like something, rip it out, rip it out. That's one of my biggest tips is sometimes you got to kind of play around and sometimes just ripping things out is going to be the best. Like we're going to take this guy out and we're going to move it over one. And I think that'll be all we need for in here because we don't want to overdo it with our support beams. It's going to take away from the room, which is not really that large anyways. We could go something like this maybe. Yeah, I kind of like how that looks and we'll throw like a stair or something in there to just kind of connect that up a little bit. Um, let's go and let's make some blocks for flooring. Pro tip number two for the episode, instead of using all of your oak planks, especially for the floor, 
use slabs instead. What we can do is we can make several of these guys and it's going to make our oak wood go twice as far. Uh, we can go and just throw all of these slabs down in here and have ourselves a nice looking little floor. And we've actually given ourselves, I think, a pretty good amount of space to work with here because we can fit all the things we need in this area. We can, I didn't make enough slabs. We can make, we can make a lot of, uh, a lot of room for chests and other goodies in here. So we're just going to turn the rest of these into that, make a few more of these guys. And let me finish out the floor and do just a little bit of decorating. And with a little bit more change of the hillside here. I think what I've decided we're going to do is we're actually going to pull across logs just like this. And I don't know if I have enough or not. I think we do. And then you can actually do what's called stripping the logs. We can actually, here we're going to take out one, two, three, four. Because we need a doorway. We're going to take out those four. And we're going to strip the rest of these just like this by holding down the, for most people to be the right click button. Like I said, I invert my buttons. So it's left click for me. Let's get up here. Take a quick look. Yeah, let's bring across this one more layer just like this and awesome now we have a front to our place we need a doorway though or well, we need a door we have a doorway so we're going to go to our crafting table we have some planks already and if we go to right here oak door we're going to right click this or left click this and we have three oak doors now uh, my recommendation you need a little bit of depth to your build don't stay on the outside and place it because that looks super flat uh, so we're going to actually go through, chop these guys back down. We're going to place them right here on the other side. Now, if we look, we have a little bit of depth, which is great. We still need to do a little bit with this. It looks very flat and very plain and a little boring. Um, so I'll have to decorate that up a little bit. But from an inside, other than maybe replacing some of this with more stone, I think just to kind of like pretty it up a little bit. I think this actually looks really good. So we can start moving all of our stuff in here and calling this our home. And now it is time for interaction by you, the fans, the viewers. Uh, me and Blue Jay have found a little way that we can both involve you in our everyday doings and for us to, hello chicken, for us to be involved with each other while we play the game as well. Um, it is a game called Resource Roulette. And you will see more about this at the end of next episode when we actually create the system for it. But basically it's gonna be a way where we randomly choose who gets somebody a resource, how much they get and what that resource is. Now how you guys get involved is right now in the comment section do it right now is drop a comment down below asking or telling us what resource you would want me to get from blue jay and go to blue jay's video if you want to as well and let him know what resource you want him to possibly get from me your comment will be randomly selected from all of the comments and if yours wins over the ones that me and Blue Jay already have in our own lists not only will Blue Jay have to get that resource for me or me for him but we will have to get double of whatever amount gets drawn of that resource for each other. So I ask that you pick things that you know I need, like oak wood or iron or cobblestone or maybe some kind of food or uh, plants or something like that. Um, let me know what things you would like for me to get from him. And hopefully I win the drawing and we get a lot of free stuff. Now that is gonna be it for this episode, guys. I'm gonna go through, collect a little bit more here. In between episodes, I may just do just a little bit of harvesting and kind of finishing out the area over here. And we'll kind of recap anything that I don't show on camera, but kind of in typical, like, Minecraft bedrock guide fashion. We'll, we'll try to show almost everything on camera. We didn't get as much done today as I was hoping we were going to. It's it's about to turn night and I'm kind of scared. Um, we wanted to get some stuff done over there, like get uh, something set up for the, uh, like the plant area. So I may do a little bit of that between episodes or do it at the beginning of next episode. I'm not quite sure yet which way I'm going to go with it. Um, and then also next episode, stay tuned because guys, it's time to go mining. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to venture down into caves. We got a good food source coming in now. I think we can, I think we can risk going down there. So I will see you guys for the next episode of the bedrock guide. Thanks for joining me for this one. We're going to feed some chickens here because chickens need to be fed to make more chickens and you guys have a good one. Goodbye.